everyone is talking about the crazy stuff that happened at Allen Field House this Tuesday night. All the news, all over the world, people are messaging me and asking me about this absolutely mishigas craziness that occurred. And of course, I'm talking about this. <laughs> That was pretty amazing. That was actually the first time in the history of Allen Fieldhouse that there was a minion, a service, an evening service with the Kaddish in Allen Fieldhouse during halftime. You weren't talking about that. For some reason, the media instead was talking about something pretty embarrassing and pretty shameful for us Jayhawks. And that, of course, is this. The and DeSosa blocks it, and now the bench is empty. Just unnecessary. Yeah. That's not good. This That's is a this punch is bad. Oh, this is bad. This is ex no, no good. Oh, this is terrible. There are going to be ramifications for this going forward, and it's just, just no point to it. Yeah, that was difficult to watch. I mean, look at those guys losing it beating each other up in front of 17,000 people and millions of people around the world watched the famous KU and K-State brawl that took place at the game this week. And a lot of people have been asking me, Rabbi, what's your take on that? So here I am, my friends, today, in honor of Shabbat, sharing with you a meaningful insight and a lesson we can take from that experience. So here's what I want to do. I have in my hand a little block. But what's going to happen if I drop this block on the table? Absolutely nothing. But what happens if I take the same block and I throw it in the water instead? Well, of course, we're going to have a ripple effect and ripples will appear all across the surface of the water. My question to you is why? Why is it that when I drop the rock on the table, there are no ripples? When I drop the rock in the water, the ripples just appear. Well, the obvious question is, what is causing the ripples? Is it the rock or is it the water? And the answer is, that ultimately what creates those ripples is not the rock that I am throwing. What creates those ripples is the reaction of the water. What a powerful message. So often in life, we experience moments that get us really upset. For example, we're playing a game of basketball and someone steals the ball from us. We're agitated, we're angry, we're upset. Now at that moment, we have a choice to make. How are we going to react to that reality? And that, my friends, is the key. What happened Tuesday night in Allen Fieldhouse was not an unfortunate incident with the ball. It was an unfortunate reaction to that incident. The player was so angry, so upset that he stole the ball, even though we were more than 20 points ahead, that he reacted with such anger. The message is clear. There's no question that in the coming week, there will be moments when someone will steal your ball. There will be difficult moments in your life. The question is, how will you react to those moments? Will you create a ripple? How will you respond to that difficulty and that challenge that comes your way? And that's the challenge that we have for ourselves. In this week's Torah portion, we find how again and again, Moses begged Pharaoh to let the Jewish people go. And God brought all these horrible plagues upon the Egyptians. And again and again, Pharaoh said, no, I will not let them go because Pharaoh chose to react to those plagues with a hardened heart. And the question we ask ourselves is what will our reaction be the next time someone comes and steals our ball? We have a choice to make. Do we wanna be full of joy, light, energy, and positivity? Or do we wanna bring anger, frustration, and perhaps even pain and hurt into those difficult moments? So wishing you a Shabbat Shalom, and let's channel the negativity that was felt Tuesday night into something positive by making a choice to react with joy and a smile. Shabbat Shalom.